So, good evening, everyone. Uh, we are going ahead with this session. As you know, what we are doing here is to have a series of angiograms where you need to give your response. I'll show you the angiogram. You should give uh, your diagnosis, where whatever brief description you are able to give. Uh, you know, in the exam, when you are given an angiogram, there is a more detailed pattern of description. Since I'm trying to show you as many angiograms as possible during this time, we'll be brief. We will try to refer to the minimum points required to reach the diagnosis. But do describe what is it that we are seeing. Okay, here we go. This is the first angiogram. I want a response from you to say that you have seen this moving. Participants, can you see the angiogram moving? Yes, good. Uh, okay, no, you have, it's only Robin who has answered. Ah, good. So now, this is on display for you, your diagnosis. You'll find that most of the angiograms are very simple conditions. I'm sure it is time enough for you to. Good, Prakash. Okay, I'm happier with Navadeep's response than with Prakash. You need to say that this is an LV angio. I would have been happier if you said that this is an LV angio in paleocranial view, showing a small to moderate subaortic VST. Ah, good, very good. Himanshu has given the perfect diagnosis. It is a pigtail catheter in the left ventricle. It is an LAO cranial view and shows a perimembranous VSD. I would have been happier, Himanshu, if you called it a small or moderate perimembranous VSD. Okay. So that is what it showed. It is an LV angio in the LAO cranial view. It is a small perimembranous VSD with a left to right strand. Okay. We go to the next one. Your answer? Come on. Something which you can um, answer only. Oh, you have missed something, Himanshu. Look at it again. Only Himanshu has answered now. What do others think? Ah, you would have liked it to be clearer. I understand. But is there a reason why it is less clear than you would like it to be? Okay. Uh, when Obviously, there is a VSD. In fact, the problem is that there are several VSDs. Whenever you have an angiogram that's not extremely clear, one of the reasons why it could be so is that there is a large shunt. In what you are seeing in this, 
in comparison with the previous lv angiogram see the lv is much more dilated that is evident even with the lesser degree of clarity with which you are seeing this and you are seeing multiple vsds just look under the aortic valve there is opacification beginning from there look in the middle you find the lv being opacified from there and the trabeculae being seen that means there is muscular vsd look lower down you also find that there is opacification occurring from there yes himanshu now you are seeing things there is a large perimembranous vsd oh uh, himanshu uh, i think you can send it to all send your responses to all so that everybody can read it your responses uh, should be sent to all so that everybody can read it so the while i would encourage everybody to answer so what you are seeing is that there is a uh, lv angiogram and uh, human should know that it is a classic tail it's not a classic tail you can see the pigtail look so don't think that it it's a regular pigtail and you find that it is a large lv the large lv means a dilated lv means that the shunt is large and with a large shunt you know your flow rate is seldom adequate to classify the vsd with a degree of clarity with which you see a small defect so this is multiple vsds one large perimembranous vsd and also muscular vsd at least one large perimembranous vsd and one large muscular vsd okay any questions that you want to ask i would encourage all of you to respond uh, as i said none of the angiograms are extraordinarily difficult they are common conditions and there is a message in each angiogram and please try to participate by actually answering now the third angio 3 I would expect a quick response in this. Ah, welcome, Vimalarani. Nice to see you. Yes. Ah, uh, Himanshu, you don't have the pigtail in PDA. Hmm. Okay. Ah, uh, good. What you are seeing is it's a iotogram in the lateral view. I would say descending iotogram in the lateral view. and you find a small pda so iotogram showing a small pda so nothing great but just to show you that this is the usual iotogram which we use for a pda closure okay that is what it showed and your four the faster you respond the more likely i'll show you all the 20 angiograms otherwise i'll have to cut short at where we are at the end of one hour and waiting for the first response okay so there are some response of course it is an rv angio it is done with a berman catheter if you look well enough you can see the balloon at the tip of the catheter it is an rv angio it shows simultaneous opacification of the aorta and the pa uh 
you see that the arch is on the left side and that is post PA band Prakash, where do you see the PA band? Can't you see that the pulmonary arteries are smaller than aorta? If you were to put a PA band, uh, the pulmonary arteries today have been huge. What would that clip show? That clip means that during the, uh, the patient has had some form of surgery before, which it could well be maybe a deletion which he had. And uh, ah, Tripti, welcome back. Uh, many of you have shown the question, the uh, have uh, made the diagnosis of DORV. A AP view RV injection is not enough to make a diagnosis of DORV. This angiogram, your diagnosis will be tetralogy. Now Himanshu is pointing out the severe infant debilar stenosis. Yes, there is severe infant debilar stenosis. But those of you who would look hard would also show, also see a large muscle bundle below the infundibulum. So here there is not only an infundibular stenosis, which is what you are seeing here, but severe sub-infundibular stenosis. This type of a large feeling defect, which seems to sort of radiate from the septum, is a feature of DCRV, which is a sub-infundibular stenosis. So what this patient has got is, and is of course an RV angiogram in the AP view with some cranial cells. There is simultaneous opacification of PA and iota. There is severe infundibular and sub-infundibular stenosis. You find good sized confluent branch pulmonary arteries. And whenever you are about to diagnose tetralogy, look at the arch. In this case, it's a left arch. Here the full diagnosis will be a tetralogy with an additional sub-infundibular stenosis. In other words, tetralogy with DCRV as Wimlerani has written. Okay, so this is tetralogy with DCRV. Why we are not saying DORV? An RV injection will show iota and PA in a tetralogy, and that's not enough to diagnose DORV. In this patient, if you were to do an LV angio in LAO view, and then find that there is no vessel coming out of LV, and it is coming through the VSD only, the iota is getting opacified, then you can diagnose DORV in this patient. At this point, we should be happy with a diagnosis of tetralogy. Any question? And you have five. you should have said modified BT shunt. Hmm? BT shunt means that it is a direct or a classical BT shunt. So when you are seeing this, say be more specific, say a right modified BT shunt and beyond the BT shunt what you see also you should describe. Yes, Navadeep, good. You can go one step further and make a further comment on those branch PAs. Uh, ah, there comes Himanshu. You have a right coronary artery catheter. Uh, it's not exactly in the right modified BT shunt, but I'll let it pass. And uh, you find confluent hypoplastic branch pulmonary artery. So you have a functioning right modified BT shunt. Good, Shabab. Uh, functioning right modified BT shunt showing confluent hypoplastic branch pulmonary arteries. So Shadab has got it uh, perhaps most correctly. And if you look hard enough, you will see that at the origin of the shunt from the uh, subclavian, you will find that there is a little narrowing of that BT shunt also. If you watch here, you find that the proximal part of the shunt is a little narrowed. So when you are shown a very simple angiogram like this, 
be careful that you describe it completely okay so this was the basic uh, uh, details and you say this you should look at only for 30 seconds you should give me the diagnosis by then You have a yes, good Bhumdarani. Uh, yes, I would have been happy if you said right bidirectional gland, well functioning gland with good size branch PAs. Uh, whether that there is a confluence stenosis uh, could be, or on the other hand, see when you are looking at the confluence in this case, we do not know whether there is an anti grade flow or not. If there is an anti-grade flow, if it's a pulsatile gland, the confluence is receiving flow anti-gradely. So our gland injection may not opacify it well. So there may not be any confluence stenosis in this. Basically, so what you see is it's a right SVC injection, opacification of confluence, good sized pulmonary arteries through a right BDG. And your seven. This is a cat light. Just a cat light, so you can come with the diagnosis right away. There's no, uh, you're not going to see an actual angiogram. This is just a cat light. Okay, um, this is some um, supracardiac TAPVC, but um, good, everybody has picked it up. And um, while saying that, remember, in a, you have to describe a cat light. I accept your uh, diagnosis here. The, you have no time to describe the details, but if this angio is shown to you in your exam, make it a point to describe the cat course. From the inferior vena cava to the right atrium to the superior vena cava to the innominate vein to the left vertical vein. And what the catlay has shown is the catheter going into the left lung from the you know from the vertical vein. You do not know whether there is a TAPVC. It could well be TAPVC, but it could well be a left upper lobe partial anomalous pulmonary venous connection also. If only the left upper lobe is draining uh, into the left uh, innominate with a vertical vein, you will get the same cat light. So it may not necessarily be a TAPVC, it may just be a left upper lobe TAPVC also. And you eight. Why now, Deep? Look closer. Why do you keep seeing a dusra in a straight delivery? Oh. 
okay good himanshu but uh, is there any reason why you can't commit is there any more response before i comment So it's a PA injection levophase. It shows pulmonary venous drainage to a vertical vein to an innominate vein. Now you say there's a supracardiac DPVC because you have definitely seen the left pulmonary vein draining there. It is the main pulmonary artery where the injection was made. So the, both lungs would be draining the same way. Uh, you did not do a selective LPA injection. It's a main pulmonary artery. With that, when you see the typical figure of age, you could say that it is a supracardiac TPVC. You had no reason to say it's mixed. You had definitely no reason to think that it's coronary sinus. Any a question on this, Andrew? During a levophase in the transmitted um, image, I'm not sure how much the figure of fate opacification you actually saw. Otherwise, this is straightforward angiogram. And you nine. Yes, Tripti, good. Now, this for the same reason as we discussed earlier, you should not diagnose this as DORV. Our diagnosis at this point is tetralogy. All of you are uh, describing it. So, it's an RV angio. which shows simultaneous opacification of the PA and the iota. You are showing severe infundibular valvar and supravalvar PS, and the arch is left. So our diagnosis is tetralogy. We do not know whether it is a DORV. If it's a DORV, you will get a very similar angio. But for simultaneous opacification of iota and PA, do not diagnose DORV from an AP injection. OK? Angio 10. Now in the same patient, we have done an LV angio in the LAO view and give the diagnosis. Yes, Himanshu, now you diagnose DORV because the LV has no outflow. IOTA does not come off the LV. You find the subiotic VST. And through that, the IOTA and TA are getting opacified. Now our diagnosis is DORVPS. And how has the catheter gone into the LV? No. Prati, you practically never enter a VSD uh, from the IVC catheter and get into the LV. And in any case, you can see how much above the VSD that catheter is. You also shouldn't have said that. Yes, Navdeep, it is across a PS4 or ASD. Remember, it is so high above the VSD, you are seeing it so high. And also, don't expect a catheter to go through a VSD from the IVC. Uh, Okay, so this was an LV angio in the area cranial view. It was an anise catheter which is anti in LV and it shows uh, whatever we said. 
ओके एंड यू इलेवन What are you seeing? See where the injection is. What do you think that you are seeing? That will give you the diagnosis. and just watching your response before commenting it is of course a epithelial catheter it is of course an aortic root angiogram and um, who said it is right art you can see that um, uh, the epithelial catheter well to the left of the spine even the at the top the epithelial catheter is well to the left of the spine so it's a left arch only you have large Aortic root angio has shown opacification of the main pulmonary artery and branches. Take a simple approach to it. You have seen the aortic root, and that injection shows an opacification of the main pulmonary artery and the branches. What are the possibilities? It could well be truncus arteriosus. The it could well be an AP window. Can it be a PDA? You must always look for the possibility of a PDA also because. If you are certain that aortic root injection has shown the PA and the descending aorta, upper descending aorta or arch has not shown the PA, then you can exclude a PDA. But in a quick injection, perhaps if the PDA, if there is a large PDA, you may see the pulmonary artery opacification. But with an aortic root angio, truncus arteriosus and AP window will be the first possibilities. If you actually see a right aortic arch in that, in this case the arch was left, truncus will lead the list. So truncus and AP window, it can't be collaterals because they're huge pulmonary arteries. With such huge pulmonary arteries, you are speaking of a large left to right shunt. So either a truncus or an AP window are the possibilities. And um, if you're not certain as to whether the opacification came from the aortic root itself or from the arch, Ductus should also be kept as a possibility. Okay? And your 12. Not very difficult. Go in order, you'll reach the diagnosis. Okay. 
Good. The first response is good. I wish uh, you were a little more specific about the sizes. Ah, good. Prakash, you have IVC to the left of spine and you have dextrocardia. So you would say that it is situs inversus dextrocardia. Once you notice that the IVC is to the left of the spine, which means the venous catheter is to the left of the spine, you have noticed that it is situs inversus. Okay? And with situs inversus, where is the injection into? It is definitely into a venous ventricle because it's a um, trabeculated ventricle that's getting opacified. So you find situs inversus dextrocardia, RV angio showing opacification of both great vessels. We have no proof that both are from RV, just as in situs solitus, the point that we made, whether both great vessels are from RV, we do not know from this view alone. But definitely, in a situs inversus dextrocardia, injection into, an, into a trabeculated ventricle has opacified both iota and pulmonary artery. And uh, as Tripti noted, the left pulmonary artery is small. So, it was a situs inversus. We uh, said the reason why we would say it is situs inversus with dextrocardia. So, this tetralogy, left pulmonary artery stenosis and a right aortic arch. Remember, a right aortic arch in this context has no significance in that it is a situs inversus, so you expect the arch to be right sided. A left arch in this context would have meant the same significance as a right arch in situs solitus. So it's a situs inversus dystocardia, tetralogy, left pulmonary artery stenosis, that would be the diagnosis. And your 13. Not so fast, Tripti. Take a closer look. Tripti, in a truncus, you expect much larger pulmonary arteries. No, Tripti. There's only one arch. Can you see this? Naldeep, can you see my marker? Human show also? Can you see where the marker is? Classic or otherwise, it's a difficult thing. Prakash has got it. It's a PT shunt only. It's a right arc. It's a BT shunt performed from the left side. So it's a left sided BT shunt. Now, it is not classic because see the left, the, the supply bin going? Had it been a classic BT shunt pass, the supply bin would be compromised. So not. The supply bin would tilt down to make the anastomosis. So this is a modified BT shunt only. I would tell you that your chance of seeing a classic BT shunt is very remote. I think we have some interference coming in our transmission. I hope that settles. We 
Can you just uh, I have some interference in the transmission. Can you respond to say that you can see and hear clearly? From the participants, I would like to hear whether you can see and hear clearly. Clear. Okay. Thank you, Prakash. Okay. Thank you, Shada. There was some interference from my side. Okay. So that is an IoT truth injection. This showed a right arch, left modified BT shunt, and opacification of confluent branch pulmonary arteries. In an IoT root angiogram, don't jump to a diagnosis of truncus or AP window. Remember, these are conditions which are associated with large pulmonary arteries. When you see smallish pulmonary arteries, in an IoT root angiogram, look for a shunt or a collateral. In this case, you saw a left modified BT shunt. Don't jump to saying that it is a classical BT shunt. For one thing, in a small child, your chance of seeing a classic BT shunt is very low because present day surgeons are unlikely to perform a classic BT shunt. If it's an older patient, say 20, 30 or 40 year old patient with a BT shunt, somebody, somebody could have done a classic BT shunt maybe 20 years ago, 25 years ago. Okay. And you're 14. Here again, look carefully. Yes, Dr. Vega. Ah, Prakash, you need to see beyond that. Yes, Dr. It is a left pulmonary artery angiogram, and the liver phase shows that there is probably a partial anomalous pulmonary venous drainage of the left lung to a vertical vein and denominate. Yes, you could call it a hemi anomalous pulmonary venous drainage. But the point is, if you are looking for a TAPVC, you need to inject into both the pulmonary arteries to be sure that the left pulmonary artery is draining into the vertical vein and the right pulmonary artery is draining into the vertical vein. This may well be a TAPVC, but we haven't showed it. What we have shown is that it is a hemi-anomalous pulmonary venous drain, or rather, we have shown that the left lung is draining into the vertical vein. If an RPA injection will show a similar pattern, then we will say that it is a TAPVC. So, what from the available information, this could be a left lung TAPVC, a hemi-anomalous pulmonary venous connection. It would become a TAPVC if a right pulmonary artery injection were to show the same finding. Okay? So, this is kept just to remind you that if you are shown one pulmonary artery injection, all that we know is that that lung pulmonary veins are draining into wherever it is shown. And you are 15.
uh, yes, that's a good description. Yeah, I think uh, we're all in the right track. It's basically an arch angiogram. You're showing your classification of the pulmonary arteries. The pulmonary arteries are not arch. Therefore, you're not simply seeing a CT. And the fact that the CT is vertical, you are now beginning to observe, that suggests that you are see, uh, likely to be dealing with a pulmonary atresia. So it's an aortic arch injection showing PA opacification through a PDA. The PA which are not dilated that you are dealing with a pulmonary atresia. That is not a simple ductus that you are seeing. Mm -hmm. Any question? Somebody was asking me a question. Okay. And you're 16. I think it would be good if all of you will mute your mics, mute your mics, and ask your questions through chatting. Otherwise, there will be too much of interference. Mute your mics and ask your questions and make your comments through chatting. Yes, um, Prakash Tripti, everybody has got it correct. See, this is the same patient as in the previous one, but. When you inject into the PDA clear into the PDA, you now realize that there is an LPA origin stenosis which is very tight. So if you are planning to stent this duct, this is a, a finding which will make you rethink. So there is a ductus injection which shows a good sized RPA, a tight LPA origin stenosis. Good. And you're 17. Very good. So, all of you have got it. It's a question as to whether you should call it an ascygus or a hemiascygus. If you are finding the continuation to be on the left side, Prakash, call it hemiascygus. If it's on the right side, call it ascygus. So, what you find here, for some of you who may not be that confident in diagnosing this entity, what you have found is a venous catheter to the right of the spine where an injection is made and you find that the IVC within quotes seems to continue as a venous channel which is going upward. And contrary to what you normally see, the IVC is not ending up in the atrium. Had it been ending up in the atrium, you must have seen the RA being opacified here. The venous channel is bypassing the heart, going above and draining into a venous structure on the left side. So this is classical of an IVC interruption. And since the if the IVC is interrupted, it can only continue as ascygus or hemiascygus veins. On the right side, call it ascygus. On the left side, call it hemiascygus. And mind you, an IVC impression is the marker of left isomerism. So, it's an IVC interruption with hemiocygous continuation into the left superior vena cava. And this is a feature of left isomerism. And you 18.
and waiting for the first response to see where the injection is. Yes, most of you have got it right. See, the injection is in the pulmonary artery. It's not a levophase. Of course, something is seen in levophase, it's a different matter. But you have a direct injection into something, and you find what is being opacified here. As somebody told this is RA, this is LA. See, there is an immediate opacification of left atrium. The why this is left atrium? It does not come to the right heart border the normal way. It is a dilated left atrium which stays within the cardiac silhouette. Therefore, what it shows is a sorry, left pulmonary artery to LA fistula. This is left pulmonary artery and you find the LA being opacified. Why not coronary sinus? Somebody said coronary sinus. The, uh, if it is coronary sinus, you would have seen a more uh, venous structure. So the pulmonary artery injection, actually the catheter is slipping into something here. And that is the anastomotic communication with the LA. So if you called it pulmonary AV fistula, it's fine with me. Or a pulmonary AV malformation, it's fine with me. But if you were able to see this angio in detail, you would notice that the opacification is directly from the LPA through a communication into the left atrium. It's not a PAPVC because whatever opacification you are seeing is not in the levophase. It is directly after the arterial injection. So your diagnosis will be a pulmonary arteriovenous fistula. And if you can directly identify where the drainage is, then you will see that it is into the LA. And therefore, we are calling it a left pulmonary artery to LA fistula. Okay, and you 19. No, no, Deep, you are way off the mark. Yes, Vimalarani, you can be a little more specific in... And Himan should get out of this habit of starting with dextrocardia and then looking at the situs. Because your diagnosis is partly correct, but that's not enough. You must start by looking at the situs. Himan should notice the situs. but they didn't get the diagnosis. Prakash, your diagnosis is right. You must look at the situs. Yes. Yes, Tripti. It is situs inverses. Why do we say it is situs inverses? Look at the venous catheter. The venous catheter is to the left of the spine. And you have the arterial catheter kept here. The arterial catheter is to the right of the spine. So since the arterial catheter is to the right of the spine and the venous catheter to the left, that means IVC is to the left and IOTA is to the right. You have situs inverses. So in an angiogram like this, every finding has a purpose. You have diagnosed situs inverses. Having diagnosed situs inverses, 
see where the heart is. Obviously, the heart is to the right. So, our basic diagnosis is situs inversus dextrocardia. With situs inversus dextrocardia, let us see where the angiogram is done. The angiogram is done with the venous catheter. So, it is in the venous ventricle. What is the morphology of the venous ventricle? It is a smooth walled ventricle. So, the venous catheter goes into the smooth walled ventricle which has to be anatomic left ventricle. So, if the venous catheter enters the smooth walled left ventricle easily, there is an atrioventricular discordance. You have the, the right atrium on the left side, the morphologic right atrium is on the left side because your venous catheter is going through the anatomic right atrium which is located to the left. So, you have an AV discordance. With that AV discordance, you have reached the smooth walled ventricle. And what is that smooth walled ventricle doing? That injection is showing opacification of the pulmonary artery all right. So, show, therefore, there is a ventricular arterial discordance because it is anatomic LV and it is opacifying the pulmonary artery. So, there is an arterio, v, uh, a, arter, the a ventricular arterial discordance. With the ventricular arterial discordance, see the valve, the pulmonary valve has tight stenosis. You can see that there is a jet opacifying the pulmonary artery, showing that there is a valvar PS. Now, below the valve, the infundibulum looks narrow only. So, there is an infundibular stenosis as well. And with this, you would like to know whether the ventricle, the interventricular septum is intact. There is a small VSD. See where my marker is? There is an opacification of the contralateral ventricle through a small VSD. So, that is a restrictive small VSD. And with the, you know where the pulmonary valve is. With the pulmonary valve here, you have the pigtail loop as a marker of the aortic valve. See where the pigtail marker is in relation to the pulmonary valve? It is right and anterior. With the pulmonary, with the aortic valve right and anterior to the pulmonary valve, in the situs inversus dextrocardia, you have got CTGA. So, you said it is situs inversus because you could identify the iota and the inferior vena cava being on the wrong side. So, it is situs inversus. With the situs inversus, you further confirmed that the RA is to the left side because the venous catheter is clearly entering the left heart border. With that, you are seeing a smooth walled ventricle. So, you know that there is an atrioventricular discordance. With the atrioventricular discordance, you find that the injection of the smooth wall ventricle is showing the pulmonary artery. Therefore, you have a ventriculo arterial discordance. With the ventriculo arterial discordance, you are looking at the outflow. There is a valvular stenosis, there is probably infundibular stenosis as well. You are looking at the integrity of the ventricular septum. See that. Through a small VSD, the RV is being opacified. So, there is a restrictive VSD. And having seen the ventricular arterial discordance, you can confirm the position of the great vessels by looking at the position of the pulmonary valve and the pigtail loop. You find that the iota is right and anterior. Therefore, we said it is situs inversus dystrocardia. It is injection into the smooth wall left sided ventricle, which means the ventricle failed to get inverted in a situs inversus, or uh, it is an IDD, which is CTGA. You saw the restrictive VSD, you saw pulmonary stenosis, and you noted the pigtail catheter marking the aortic valve right and anterior to pulmonary vein. It is a complex heart disease, but something which you can uh, identify in this by following segmental anatomy correctly. Any question on this? I will give you a minute to think and ask questions.
none and you think it Yes, Prithi. It is an LP angio. It is LPA stenosis. I hope you will note that it is a postural patient. So, what is the setting in which this usually occurs? And what do you think we are about to do? Yes, Simon. So, it's a lay view. It's an LPA stenosis postural. And what is the usual postural? Tetralogy. Yes. The procedure that you are likely to do is less likely to be a balloon dilatation. You are more likely to do a stent. Of course, it's not a severe stenosis. Let's say, uh, yes, yes, Vimlarani. It's a uh, postural LPA stenosis. We are likely to stent this if it is severe. So, it's LPA induction LA view. It shows LPA origin stenosis. Shall we conclude on that note?